All right, here's an example. Sorry for the glare from the window behind me. I just feel like I have to acknowledge it. But here we're trying to determine whether a collection of vectors is a linearly independent set. So it helps to not just go right to maybe, you know, a certain way to set this up, not sure why, to, to really working from the words in the problem. Um, a collection of vectors is linearly independent if the homogeneous equation, so C1 times vector 1 plus C2 times vector 2 plus C3 times vector 3, we've got three vectors in this case, equal to the zero vector, if that has only the trivial solution. So if the only solution to this is C1, C2, C3, all must be zero. That's the trivial solution. And that should be the only solution uh, if a set is linearly independent. So the way to, to figure this out then would be to set up that equation. So if we say we have C1 times vector 1 plus C2 times vector 2 plus C3 times vector 3 equal to the zero vector in R3. So zero, zero, zero. We want to find the solution set to this equation. If the solution set contains non-trivial solutions, then the collection of vectors is linearly dependent. If this system has only the trivial solutions, C1, C2, C3, all have to be zero, then it's a linearly independent set. So it was discussed in a previous section that this vector equation can be represented as an augmented matrix where we have these vectors as the columns. Always being careful to copy the vectors correctly. A lot of times that's what goes wrong. Augmented with the 0, 0, 0 over here. Uh, the reason for that, by the way, is uh, suppose we multiply C1 times this vector plus C2 times this vector plus C3 times this vector. You get the point. Um, and then combine these vectors. So you'd have 1 times C1, negative 1 times C2, plus 2 times C3 equals 0. And then I'll do one more. The second component would be negative 2 times C1 plus 0 times C2, which I guess I'll write, uh, plus 1 times C3 equals 0. And then you kind of get the point with the last equation. Uh, but so then that system of linear equations could be represented. You can kind of see that first row, 1, negative 1, 2, 0, negative 2, 0, 1, 0. So just to give you a little background on, on why we can go from this equation to this augmented matrix. Okay. Uh, so now we want to row reduce. Uh, steps I would take, so I would want to get rid of this negative 2 right here. Uh, I'd be inclined to do 2 times row 1, add that to row 2, make that my new row 2. And I'm also going to do, because this would be an independent operation here, um, get rid of the 3. So negative 3 times row 1 plus row 3, make that the new row 3. Uh, row 1 is going to stay the way it was. OK, uh, let's see, row 2, new row 2. That'd be 2 plus negative 2, and then negative 2 plus 0, 2 times this. So 4 plus 1, and 0 plus 0. OK. And then so if I had written, written this as separate steps, then now I would copy 3, 2, 1, 0. And then the next step would be this. And what I would end up with is negative 3 plus 3, and then negative 3 times this. So positive 3 plus 2. Negative 3 times this would be negative 6 plus 1. And 0 plus 0. All right. And I've run myself out of room. So remember that this is the question. My, my board's not all that large here. Kind of want to leave that as well. OK, uh, so next thing, I like to have a pivot in the d positions along the main diagonal. I'd like the pivot to be 1, is what I was 
thinking in my head didn't say I, I like to put the pivots you know along that main diagonal ideally uh, I like to turn them into ones sorry guys all right so I could do negative one half times row two I'll get five half negative five halves which isn't that big of a deal but um, I've got nicer multiples here so what I might do is, and I hope this is okay with you guys, I'm just going to write down here, I would do one-fifth times row three, make that the new row three. Um, when I do that, uh, so one-fifth times this, this will become a one, one-fifth times this, this will become a negative one, one-fifth times zero, that's still zero, and the other two rows would have stayed the same. So rather than copy the whole matrix, I'm just going to kind of, note that here and then do a swap so then i would swap that new row three with row two and that i will write up here so row one stays the way it was swap this zero one negative one zero up here and now we can do two times row two plus row three I'll get rid of that as well. Okay, so now we can do two row two plus row three becomes the new row three. That'll get rid of this two right here. Uh, so we'll have zero plus zero, two plus negative two, two times this, so negative two plus five and zero plus zero. Okay, so now we've now reached echelon form. Um, one thing I would note here, so notice how we have pivots in each variable column here. So each column has a pivot. That means, if you remember, that indicates a single solution to the system. Well, if homogeneous equations, you might remember from the last section, a homogeneous equation always has the trivial solution the all zero solution. If there's a single solution, then that single solution is going to be the trivial solution. So if you have a pivot in each of these columns for your coefficients of the variables, then uh, your only solution is the trivial solution. So it's fair to say when you end up with a pivot in each of these columns, the vectors are linearly independent. We know now the vectors are linearly independent. Um, one other thing I want to point out. So notice in all the row reduction, the column of zeros in the constant column stayed a column of zeros. So when we set these up in the future, a couple of things, a couple of, sh of shortcuts. Uh, you don't need to write this zero column. You just set up your vectors as the columns of a matrix. And if you get a pivot in each column, then the vectors are linearly independent. Okay, and that's mainly what I want to show you with this example. Let me just back up and explain why pivot in every column means tri only the trivial solution. I mean, there is the rationale I gave you a second ago, but also suppose we go through with actually writing out the solution set here. So row three gives us the equation 3x3 equals zero, divide both sides by three, well then x3 is equal to zero. Okay, if x3 is zero, then if I go up to row two, this is saying uh, x2 minus x3 equals 0. Uh, so x2 is equal to x3. And x3 we just said is 0. So therefore x2 is 0. And now if I go to row 1, I have x1 minus x2 plus 2x3 equals zero, but we just determined that x2 must be zero and x3 must be zero. And so this equation boils down to x1 equals zero. So I'm not writing all the details, but, and that's the way the dominoes are going to fall every time you have a pivot in each uh, column on the variable side of your uh, augmented matrix. And you're solving a homogeneous equation well, then every single time you're going to end up with each variable must equal zero. So pivot in every column tells you the vectors are linearly independent because you're always going to end up with just the trivial solution. And just to make sure I answer this question, so determine whether this collection of vectors is linearly independent. 
yes, it is linearly, linearly independent.